Man, you guys didn't even hit the like goal. Now, when I set out to make this series, this suit was one of the costumes I feared making the most. I mean, look at this thing. The rich detailed fabrics, the meticulous web pattern, the cut up logos, the complicated pattern. The Raimi suit was easy because it's almost no different from any other Spider-Man suit I've made. It's classic Spider-Man, but silver. But Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man suit is so complicated that many, many, many reference images were needed to make sure I'm even in the ballpark of accuracy. And all of those images were compiled into this concept sketch of my pattern. I tried to account for everything here. The many seams, the complex gloves, the red lined sleeves. I also noticed that there's a unique strip of fabric on the sleeves too. So I'll be replicating that on my suit as well. I figure I should probably introduce you to my fabrics too. At first I wanted to go with a clear dot red and blue combo. But I realized the clear dot red might make the suit's red way too bright. And I'd rather use something with more detail anyway. Since the red fabric on the TASM suit looks kind of muddy and textured. So I went with a red fabric you guys might recognize from my Spider-Man 2099 suit. I'll still be using red clear dot for the hand patches on the gloves though. The blue remains clear dot. And that small fabric strip I mentioned earlier will be done with Parallel Life Studios blue hexagon fabric. I actually got this fabric while working on a costume for my good friend Earthcore Media. He's using it in a film he's making called Mechazoic. Honestly, I, I wish I made a better costume for this film. I, I could have sized it better. I'm not too fond of my work on this one. But uh, hopefully I'll do the fabric justice this time around. All right, let's start with this mask. I'm gonna use a light board for the webbing just to make sure it all lines up once it's sewn. I wanted to use some old TASM sunglasses for the lenses, especially since I've heard of other people using them for their own TASM replicas. But once I ended up putting them on a mask, they looked way too small on my head. So I ended up using some bigger foam ones I made instead. This red fabric is real tight, and I didn't like how high up the neck of the mask was. So I ended up adding some extra neck. Now with the mask done, I can finally tackle the behemoth that is the layout of the TASM suit. I'll start by referencing the concept pattern and turning that into real full-size pattern pieces. Let's start with the shirt. It should be the only easy part of the body to sew. There's a couple extra seams on the shirt piece, and the sleeves are gonna be a real bitch since the cuffs are all cut up by the blue that leads into the gloves. This thing is so goddamn tight that I had to install zippers onto the wrist to make it even slightly possible to get in and out of this thing. I'm gonna paint the webs on after I finish the sewing. I kinda dig the webless look. Oh right, the pants. All right, I'm stopping in the middle of my process here to show you guys what I'm, what I'm working with. These are the leggings. Now, the TASM leggings have a very intricate sort of pattern work going on, and you can see that more on this side of the uh, leggings here. Basically, the seam work I've had to do is so intricate that I have basically had to break down this set of leggings into like, I don't know, a bunch of different pieces and then sew them all together, which is very different than the usual one color, no special seams, uh, Spider-Man suit. So, sorry, I was watching Barry in the back. This is bullshit. What isn't so bad though, are the red stripes going down the side. I've always been a fan of red striped pants on the Spider-Man suit. I had no idea how I was going to do the web shooters. I was contemplating on even making them until I started staring at my sewing spools for too long. Once I get a good painting in, these might look enough like the real thing. Now I need some gloves. Once again, hour long process turned into five hours of work because the TASM suit demands complication. Complicated seam work, extra padding on the gloves, the usual. I still haven't done any of the webbing on the suit. I figured it'd be such a pain that I'd save it for later. But with the main body of the suit all sewn up, including the gloves, there's not much left to do but paint the damn thing. Unless I decide to make the boots instead. The boots were real easy. One big nice sheet of fabric with my boots drawn and painted onto them. Now all that's left is to cut them out and sew them together. I wasn't worried about replicating the signature ASIC soles. I used the water shoe method. A method I've used on previous suits, but this time, I'll be painting the soles to look like the ASICs. All right, I've been stalling long enough. All that's left to do is to paint the costume. That means adding the spider logo and the web pattern. This suit's kind of tricky. The spider logo breaks into several blocks and those breaks align with the web pattern. I thought this breaking shit was super dumb, especially on the back since there's no web pattern to justify it. 
but I realized maybe this will keep the puff paint from cracking in awkward places on the spider logo. Maybe that's why it was designed this way. And with the webs all laid out, there was nothing left to do. The suit was finished. I feel like these process videos get shorter and shorter. This costume was really hard to make. It took a lot of seam work, a lot of time and hours and attention poured into it. And yet, I feel like this is one of the shortest costume making montages that I've ever done. Like the initial part of the video is only like six minutes. And I think it's because I either don't get enough footage because I'm too lazy to, and I'd rather just make the suit, or there's just not as much to show you guys. You guys have seen me make a costume a billion times, you know what I mean? There's not much to show you other than, you know, some of the process. Just to show you the whole thing, I feel like is kind of redundant, you know, considering how many times we've done this. But you know, regardless of what time it is, we're gonna do it again and again and again, and it's not gonna stop. This is not gonna be the last movie replica I make. I just know it. The next one is gonna be the TASM 2 suit, and I already have the fabrics. I wanted something with a little bit of shine to it because the TASM suit can get a little shiny, a little dark sometimes. So I thought these fabrics that have a little square texture on them to emulate the brick texture on the TASM 2 suit, I thought these would be super nice to use. And I'm not going back on it. These are the fabrics I'm going to use for the TASM 2 suit. Honestly, I'm excited to make it uh, because I think I can really do a better job on the TASM 2 suit than I did this one. Because the TASM 2 suit is pretty much just a spiffy classic suit. There's like really nothing special I have to do. This suit was something special I had to do. There, there are a lot of places where I feel like I could have done better on this suit. I find the web shooters to be a little proppy, maybe a little kiddish. Honestly, I'd love to have like a real TASM web shooter replica to put on this suit, but I just didn't know where to find one in time for the video. And I thought maybe it'd just be a little charming to make one myself. There were many times throughout the costume montage where my mask would come out at the sides. That's because I only have the mask attached at the front and at the back, which allows me to do the Spider-Man hood thing, kind of. But I'm thinking maybe in the future, I'll add some snap buttons to the side of the neck to prevent this from happening. When I first made the boots with the red fabric I decided I was going to use, I noticed that they were a little too short than I'd expected. And when I wore them, I was like, oh yeah, these are not gonna be tall enough. So I added a red clear dot extension. It looks kind of good but I still wish I had somehow had the foresight to make these boots much longer so that I wouldn't have to break up the fabric a little bit. And of course, some of the web lines on this thing are a little too messy, but as much as I have problems with my crafting of it, 
I still think a little bit of a scrappier look for this costume is faithful to what it's supposed to be. In this movie, they really wanted to try to sell the fact that Peter made this costume himself. You got to see a lot more of him making it than you did in the Raimi movies. You just really got to see Peter go through the pit making this thing. So my scrappier version, I think, is, is not so bad because I think it kind of adds to that feeling they were going for. I'm really happy to own this costume in some semblance, even if it was by my own hand. This is one of my favorite Spider-Man costumes of all time, and for a while I never thought I would own something like it because I didn't want to make movie suits and I don't want to buy movie suits either, unless they're relatively cheap. Basically I never thought I'd own a Tasm suit, and well, kind of thanks to you guys since you didn't hit the light goal but I still decided to make the video anyway, I now have my own Tasm 1 suit. So that makes me pretty happy. If you guys want to see me make the TASM 2 suit, this video has to hit 5 billion likes. If this video doesn't hit 5 billion likes, I'm not making the TASM 2 suit. You hear me? It's not going to happen unless you use Fortnite creator code AMAZINGPSM. It's not gonna happen unless you go to my merch shop and get you some merch. It's not gonna happen unless you join the channel and become a channel member so you can get early access to my Spider-Man cartoon and, and snippets and clips of it that I haven't released to the public because it's not done yet. This TASM2 suit isn't gonna happen unless all of those things happen. Five billion likes, Fortnite creator code, buy my merch, join the channel so that you can watch my Spider-Man show or whatever's done of it early. Get out of here!